I really want to learn how to code, but I feel like it's going to take me forever. What's the point? <laughs> Don't worry, I got you covered. As someone who has been in the tech industry now for five plus years and started out similar to probably where you are or have been, learning how to code from scratch, not knowing anything, not knowing if this would even go anywhere, it can be pretty overwhelming. Today, I'm going to share with you just how long does it really take to learn to code? And not just to learn to code, but become proficient in it. I'm going to break it down for you very realistically. I am going to share a timeline with you, numbers with you, because sometimes with these things, there's so many variables that can be hard to give it to you uh, as far as how many months or years or centuries does it take to learn how to code. Before we get into it though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech coding career related videos. And as always, these videos I make based on your questions, your feedback. So leave in the comments any questions you have. I answer all of your questions, so leave them there. Okay, let's just, let's just jump right into it. Okay, as I kind of mentioned, there is so many variables that go into formulating the answer as to how long does it take to learn how to code. For example, if you are someone who's been a software developer for a while, has learned code in the past, learning a new programming language is going to be relatively uh, quick to learn versus someone who is coming in from scratch. I'm going to give you a little bit of my experience with learning programming languages. The first programming language I learned was, as many of you probably know by now, JavaScript. And it was through a coding bootcamp I learned the MERN stack, so MongoDB, uh, Express, React, and Node. The bootcamp itself was three months, just under three months, no, 10 weeks. It was just over two months in length. And when I left that bootcamp, I had been coding every day for you know Monday to Friday, nine to five. Of course, not just purely coding, but learning code, focusing on that. And when I left, I honestly didn't feel job ready, if that tells you something. Meaning I knew I still had some work to do before I felt I was at a place where I could get a job as a software developer. Now, that is me coming from zero experience into a coding bootcamp to then starting to look for a job. So I would say for me, if you are going into it completely from scratch and you are doing the bootcamp route, uh, that is my experience. It took just over three months and even then, I didn't really feel job ready. And I really wanted to highlight that because now when I look online and see different boot camps, a lot of them offer longer length programs. So it might be uh, three months, uh, six months in length. And if, if that was available at the time when I was going to a coding boot camp, I definitely would have taken that. But going to a coding boot camp before they were popular, insert my, my cane here, uh, it was one of those things that it was, yeah, just a very quick in and out 10 week kind of program. Nowadays, I feel like they're much better with uh, taking time to make sure people actually know what the heck they're doing before just setting them out on their own. Alongside with how long it takes to learn how to code, one question I get asked often is, should I learn to code online? Should I learn to self-teach code? And I think this is an interesting question because it's something that I experienced this thought of as well when I was starting out because it's one of those things that it's a lot cheaper for one thing, you know, and you can learn on your own pace. It sounds really good up front. Here are some pros about learning to code online. One being it's cheap, if not free, meaning you can take different coding tutorials on YouTube, uh, free courses on Udemy, the list goes on. Another thing that's great about teaching yourself how to code online is the flexibility, meaning you can code whenever you want and whenever you don't want, you can just close your computer. Everything I just listed as a positive, I'm sure you are aware, can become a negative. Meaning when it comes to the free side of things, oftentimes with free resources, there's little support. So you might be taking a coding tutorial online, uh, but there might be, the person who made it might not be available to ask uh, any questions to or anything like that. So the support is very limited. The other side with flexibility is sometimes when there's flexibility, it's too much flexibility that you end up not doing anything because you get overwhelmed with all the information coming at you. For me, how I decided that coding or teaching myself how to code was not going to be the way to go long term is after I got to a point where I understood the basics, but I was really craving that extra support. And there are support places online like Slack or Discord. So don't get me wrong, you can do it if you're super determined. For me though, having a community and people to surround me, even just that mental support was so huge and that's why I ended up choosing a bootcamp. Now, of course, the obvious way, if you are interested in coding, is computer science. And this is something that I don't have experience. I didn't go to school for computer science. Uh, I didn't even really think about coding until after I graduated university. So it wasn't something that 
I could have done. Uh, but, you know, of course, computer science is a four-year degree typically. There are different courses as well that are closer to two years in length. And I think this is an excellent way to go if you are looking to not do a career switch, but you're more so looking to go to schools for something. And if I would have known I was so passionate about technology and coding, way back when, like after high school, I definitely would have gone the computer science rep. Now that's not to say you have to do that, but it definitely is a great opportunity if you are someone who wants to go back to school for a longer period of time. Okay, you're probably like at this point, Tiff, this is great and all, but I already have the path I'm going down. And if you're watching this video, it most likely is one of those paths. So going back to the question, how do you know how long it's going to take? Well, for me, I'm just gonna give you the answer right up front and then break it down for you how to make it possible. I would say if you are learning a new programming language, a realistic time frame for getting proficient in code, really understanding it, would be between three to six months. Now, three months would be on the end that you have some experience with coding or you're a really quick learner, your brain is already kind of programmed program to program, if that makes sense, what you have strong background in math or you're very familiar with logical thinking in that setting. Six months, if you were someone like me who didn't come from a programming background, had never even really thought about writing code until diving into this journey. Now, does it take six months to get a job? I would say yes. I would say from beginning first programming language to your first job, it will. If not longer, it might even take you up to a year. And that's something you need to be prepared about. Now, why I give an example of a year time frame is because maybe you aren't committing to this full time. Maybe you are working and then on the side you are studying code. So I think really, if you really want to get into the, the nitty gritty, do people still say that? Am I really, does that, the nitty gritty. Uh, if you really want to get into the nitty gritty here, the reality is this. We shouldn't be thinking about how long does it take to learn how to code. Although that is the question I get asked all the time, we should really reframe this question to think about why am I learning how to code? And I think that is so important because of a few things. The why will answer your motivation. It will keep you motivated if you know why you are learning to code. Is it for a job? Is it to build a company, a new app? portfolio. That will really depict, I think, your level of determination and depiction. And when you take time to actually answer the why and really break it down versus, I'm interested in code, you'll find that your motivation and discipline goes up. For example, hmm, I think I'm going to learn how to code today. Okay, well, that's going to fade out in, you know, very quickly. If you come at this angle, hmm, I think I'm going to learn how to code. Why? Because I want to get a six figure paying job that allows for me to work remotely, flexible. I want to learn front end development, at least to start with. That seems really popular. Okay, do you see what I mean? Having an actual why, whether it's you write it down or share it with someone, will really help you keep focused and motivated. So that's just a little side tip, by the way. Okay, here's where I think most of your time should be spent when you are learning to code. And something that so many beginners especially make when they're first starting out myself included. Focus most of your time, the majority of your time, on the basics, on the fundamentals. Whatever programming language you are learning, whether it be Python, Java, JavaScript, uh, C++, focus your time on really understanding the fundamentals. Asking why. This is something, this is advice I got from a solution architect a while back and they said to me, Tiff, you know, you're a great coder, you're building projects for us, you know, doing everything great. But have you ever thought about the why? And I was like, I don't understand what you mean. And on this project, for example, we were using Angular. And he goes, have you ever thought about why we chose to use Angular? What makes it better than React in this instance? Or why we didn't go with Vue or any other framework? Like, have you ever asked yourself the why? And I thought, wow, I really have not ever asked myself why. And it took me off guard at first and something I thought about for a while. And since then now, I really try and ask myself again, why? Going back to another kind of why, uh, which is really about what makes this programming language better? What makes this framework better? Why are you learning? Why did you choose the programming language or the framework that you are learning? Now, why is this important and why will this speed up your process? Well, two things. It will speed up your process because once you understand really the purpose of this programming language that you are learning, it will help you understand different use cases and it makes it more it makes it more uh, applicable in real world settings, if you will. So I think that's something, a little tip that I was given that I would highly suggest is really understanding the why and not learning something because it's just the new hottest thing to learn, such as 
React, you know, it's been around for a while now, but it's still so popular to learn, or Vue, or anything like that, but really understanding, well, why is it so popular? Why do so many companies use it? That will also set you apart from the crowd when it comes to interviewing and uh, really having a strong knowledge. To wrap it up though, here's some of my biggest advice that I wish I had when I was first starting to learn how to code. Focus less on the end result, meaning stop putting so much pressure on yourself to be this amazing coder, to learn code in under 30 days or you're a failure, and focus more on the quality. This is something that I completely did not do at first and it really came to bite me in my first job when I was starting to code. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know some of the basic git commands like i was i you know i went straight from javascript to react to mongodb way too quickly and i had to really take a big step back and that's something i hope that if you take anything away from this video is that focus on the foundations i know i keep on saying that but because it's so important i get so many messages from people saying i really want to learn how to code or i really want to learn anything but i feel like i'm never going to get there i keep on trying but i fail well, how much pressure are you putting on yourself? Are you, how are you speaking to yourself? Learning to code is so much more than just learning a new skill. It's learning to think in a different way. And I think one of the things that really isn't spoken about with coding and software engineering in general is the amount of pressure we put on ourselves. And I really wanted to talk about this because it's something that can be with imposter syndrome make you almost feel frozen that you can't keep on learning because you put all this unrealistic expectations on yourself and in turn don't learn anything. So I always say this advice, be patient and speak to yourself how you would speak to others. Oftentimes we are very negative to ourselves, so be positive. You will get there, it just takes time. You know, and, and okay, the next question is, well, where do I start? This is something I often find interesting because you're going to spend your entire career, if you get into coding to whatever degree, you're going to spend your entire career Googling. So start learning how to Google, start flexing those muscles, start Googling where to start and really taking it upon yourself. I know it seems overwhelming at first. For me, I would start with even free CodeCamp. I, I love free CodeCamp, as you know, go on there, check out some free resources, start with Python, JavaScript, Java, whatever one you want to start with, going back to the why you want to learn a programming language, and then that will help pick what programming language you learn next. Oh, the sun is coming out. This is good. Uh, and I really wanted to focus on that today because I did tell a number, three to six months to learn a new programming language, but I hope you got so much more out of this video than just a number. I hope you got out of it motivation and insight as to how we really need to flip the script and how we speak to ourselves and the pressure we put on ourselves and start being more realistic because you are amazing, I'm awesome, you know, everyone's awesome. Muggs, my dog Muggs, as you know, he's watching me talk right now. You are awesome. <laughs> And we just need to be more kind and encourage each other to, to continue to learn and continue to ask questions because that is how we grow. Okay, this video was kind of unstructured. I hope you found it valuable. I just really wanted to get this off my chest because I think it's a really important subject to cover. Thank you all for watching. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Bye everyone.